I, say, I guess going on export, mm. um, you know, we, we seem to be seeing more and more products being exported, yeah. uh, specifically to China, is specific there. Yeah. Do you see this as a problem moving forward when the farms are now not owned, or, you know, not all of them, but some of them are now not owned by Australians and they're using that to export, giving a small amount of product into the country, but taking a lot of the product overseas? Do you see this as a problem moving forward? Yes, I do, because I exported to Hong Kong for the last 20 or so years. Uh, I want to, I, we have offers from mainland China for distributors to, uh, to distribute our products. They won't let me in as a value added meat product. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a protectionist industry. But they can come to Australia and buy the whole farm. Yeah. I had a discussion with a politician once regarding investment. He said, Billy, we need investment. I understand investment. There's a difference between a politician and a businessman's version of investment. The businessman investment is that they come and buy 49% of the company. So we still have controlling share. That's an investment. When they come and buy that, right, it's a takeover. If you don't understand the difference, we're in big trouble. <laughs> right? But it's true, isn't it? Well, it's, it's so true, and I, I think it's... A and we're, we're paying for the price. Yeah, and that's the, that's the problem. I mean, we're seeing that with milk, for instance. Yes. Um, you, you know, it's 50% of the milk produced here in Australia is foreign investment owned. When water costs more than milk, I am staggered. Are you kidding me? Somebody's doing a con job here. Yeah. You know, they need to smarten up. I understand that when the co-ops went out of the way, uh, so what's it called, divide and conquer? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I and think, I think they've been conquered. I think Genghis Khan also said that as well. Yes. Um, uh, so where, where does it stop? Because you know, we, we've, in our industry, we've seen that milk, you know, we, some bright spark from Coles uh, talked, you know, started this dollar milk, um, dollar a litre, mm -hmm. dollar milk. And this was to compete with, because this person was from the UK, so they come over and introduce that into Australia, which means the farm price gets so low that in the end, no one makes money. Yes. And farmers go out of business. Country suffers. Country suffers. And we may be in a situation where we might not have enough fresh milk to supply our own market. It's absurd. It's really absurd. I think if the government, federal government, can't step in and change a few things, there's going to be some dramatic problems here, you know. And I think at the end of the day, it becomes a federal government issue or that they've got to support some industries. I, mean, I don't want a socialist situation, but in certain times, certain industries need that leg up. And this is one of them. OK, and I understand that everybody wants uh, called the uh, what's the supermarket? I wouldn't supply supermarkets for a long time, because the word terminology called lost leader. <laughs> Remember that terminology, lost leader? Oh, I hate that with a vengeance, right? Lost leader, you know, and so on. So I wouldn't supply supermarkets for that one reason, that uh, put me on a pedestal. I make I try to make the best products possible. OK, so if anybody wants to make the generic or something that's not in the marketplace. 80% of people got taste buds, 20% of people haven't got any. I'll take the 80 any day. Okay, you can have the 20. Okay? <laughs> I, mean, I think I'll take 100% of them, but... <laughs> but you but... can't get it all. I'm, I'm going great, not bald yet. <laughs> so talking about the 80% that you'll get, mm. you're, you, you've never wanted to bastardise your product, Correct. as we call it, and you, you call it a loss leader. And, uh, we do that in our own business, and I, I personally hate it. I hate having to sell a product under your cost. It really makes no sense at all. Well, it makes a loss for you. Yeah, correct. I won't fund it. Yeah, correct. And then when we fund it ourselves, it's a definite loss. And we, we understand that. And I think those days of that deep cut, I think they have gone. Because you don't get the impact you get anymore, like when you do go super cheap in a catalogue. You don't, in the old days, you get a 20% increase. And now, you just don't get it. So the, the consumers are more in tuned for that everyday low price or that price drop where it's a great price, but it's not under cost and it's not too expensive. It's like right in the middle. And the consumers are becoming more attuned for that. And they want that all year round. Yeah, consumers got to understand 
there's a cost. Business works on margins, right? If you can't get your margin, your, uh, your employment has just gone down. The, the 300 people I employ depend on us being astute enough in management here to make sure that they got a job. They got a, com they got a, a mortgage, they got kids to bring up, they got to pay for schools. So I feel that it's a, an almost, uh, when you get to a stage like I am, that uh, I would say that you got to make sure that these people uh, can do what they want in their life and be happy with their things. Now there's different levels of success, you know, yeah. and so on. But if you, some people here put in more than others and others work just a normal pace. I've got eyes. I understand your remuneration, right, and so on. So um, people look after me, get looked after as well. And in general, uh, the long-term relationship with my employees, I work on the floor with them. There's nothing too small or too big for me to do, you know. And there's nothing belittling anybody. I think a lot of people want to sit in a, up in the office and run and manage my industry from the office. Big mistake. You, they'll tell you what you want to hear. Yep. Uh, I can walk into a bakery and tell you, tell them that can you get the maintenance people? The bearing is going to go in, in a week or two, and they go, "How do you know? I can't hear anything. My hearing is excellent. <sighs> Fix the bearing before it goes. Damn time is money." Yep. So, uh, be um, uh, how you how would you say? Um, be proactive, not reactive. Yeah. Well, right? And 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 it helps. Because when you've got 30 people in one little area and uh, not doing anything, waiting for maintenance to fix it, it costs me money. Yep. And, and of course, the lack of production makes lack of profit, so the business is not as viable as it should be. You know, there are some highs and lows in business, but every 12 to 14 years, the ugly head pops up its head and the profits aren't as good. So the consumer has got to understand, like currently, there is a price increase and there could be more incoming because of the fact purely what is happening in the country, the drought, this, that, and everything, you know, and so on. I argue with people. I, my wife and I drive throughout all of Australia. To Alice Springs we drive, to Brisbane we drive for business, to Sydney heaps of times, to Melbourne, Canberra, and I take, set my compass for the east, my GPS east, and I'll take some roads that you haven't even heard of, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it'll take me three days to get there, <coughs> okay? But I have seen the land, I've seen the farm. I have stopped and talked to farmers. They're so happy to talk because they haven't seen anybody for days or weeks, you know, and so on. You find out what's really happening in the country. Know the surreal surroundings and what's happening. I was coming back through hay one year and the sheep I couldn't see in the grass, it was so high, it was February. And I said, she, I came back and told my, my meat people, buy as much of everything you can of meat because there's a lot of feed out there. They're going to hang on and yep. breed up. So you've got to be savvy. Look around the country. I love Australia. I, you know, you got bush. People are so down to earth, you know, and you don't get the bull. You get the truth. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Uh, I... I reckon that driving around Australia, people might, my team tell me, why? my grandson said, well, Grandpa, you haven't been on holiday for ages to Europe. Why would I go there? Look at the best country in the world. I've driven two thirds of Australia with my wife and I. That is a thing my Rosemary says, the only reason why she likes to drive and get me in the car for a couple of weeks is that I, she has my undivided attention. I can't escape <laughs> in the car, right? And it's true, isn't it? I can't, I, I got, got a wife filter in one ear, but it, the other ear still coughs it. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a true way of actually knowing not your environment, knowing your customer and acting on it. And, you know, there's clearly not many people would be doing that. And yeah. that's the difference between you and everybody else. It really is a big difference. And it's, it is remarkable to hear this side of, side of your story where you, know, you don't see that. And you, yeah, and you, I enjoy it as well. I'm assuming you enjoy this. Yes, I, I was gonna say when the wife gets a bit narky. <laughs> but it's okay. I've been married a long time. I'm uh, a survivor. I, I don't, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. I've had, my, I've had my 51st wedding anniversary already to one woman. <laughs> Uh, not to three or four or five. 